Today, we're going to review Gunfighter's Ball by Forrest Harris and Brian Jubilation Martin by Knuckle Duster Miniatures. Gunfighter's Ball, one of my favorite uh, Western games thus far. Uh, I have not, uh, I also have a couple other ones I'm reviewing, but uh, Gunfighter's Ball uh, is definitely one of the most, you know, uh, visually, visually awesome, different mechanics, different rules that you're not used to. It really gives that uh, kind of one-on-one -on -one gunslinger, atmosphere that you're looking for uh, with Wild West. You know, it's a small skirmish game, I would call it. Maybe, you know, two to six play, six, well, two to six miniatures on the table. After that, you really can't, you know, it just gets bogged down just a little bit. Um, if you know the rules really well, you could play with more figures. Uh, but for the most part, uh, I've played this with uh, three figures and I played this with six figures. And that seems to be like the good ballpark amount of figures that you have, especially like when you're first starting out, you only want to use a couple couple figures at a time. But uh, beautiful, shiny cover, um, awesome picture, and all this stuff in this picture um, that you see here is actually uh, are, are miniatures that are available on the website. Uh, even the bar, the bartender, the bystanders, the gamblers, and things like that. Um, and, you know, it's on Knuckle Duster Miniatures. Um, Nice glossy back book. Nice pictures of some of a you know scene from gunfight, a gunfight, and um, I mean you can you you can have two to twelve players play this game at once. Um, it's a good convention game as well. I can see it as a convention game. I have not played it as a convention game, you know, where you have eight players aside. But if you have eight players, you obviously only want to have like two guys per player, you know. Uh, two miniatures per player, but a nice hardbound book, um, really nice heavy paper, and some beautiful pictures here. This is the a zoom in of the cover art, and of course, the awesome artwork and the style of Wild West, of course, or the Old West. This says, finally, Gunfighter's Ball, uh, <laughs> the game of skill and chance with no equal anywhere in the civilized world. So you can recreate the thrilling exploits of the gunfighters of you're in a pleasant evening of casual, stimulating murder at your kitchen table. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. It kind of goes into a preface. Uh, it gives a, uh, the preface is by Forrest. He, he talks about gunfights um, and uh, the, the reason for the book and what's in the pages to follow and, you know, groups, you know, he says in here also there's groups of three to six players are ideal. Uh, a two-player game can be played, of course, and they're included in this book, um, you know, and you have judges and things like that, but we'll get in there, I'll get, get to that. So, obviously, you have your acknowledgments, um, your contents page, which is great because it gives a, pic a picture about the authors. Uh, there's Brian Jubilation Martin, and he's making a funny face, um, which is pretty, pretty funny. And, of course, uh, William Cody, nope, Forrest Harris, <laughs> he scratches that out. But as you can see, there's a lot of contents. It's really laid out. Everything that you can find is, is in the contents here. Um, finding something about shooting or skill test or environmental dangers and animals rules. I mean, they have animals in this that could attack you, which is pretty neat. So it gives you a awesome introduction to the game. And it's a welcome to the world of gunfighters ball. And here is the dirt simple overview of the game. If you're curious about the game, this right here is the page for you to read. I'll just briefly describe it. It gives you a description of gunfighters ball, the tabletop miniatures game, uh, tells you how everything is set up. Um, the person providing the miniatures and running the game is called the judge. So this book is designed to have a judge to go along with it for the games itself, uh, which is, Obviously, it's not necessary to have a judge, but it's always, you know, it's a benefit to have one. Um, the judge tells you who or your character is or will be, and there will be a broad, you can start your, uh, there, 
uh, where on the board you can start your figures and what your goal is. So they, they basically, the judge is the person who actually sets up the scenarios, brings the game out there, and you have some players. Now this game is great for me because I do a lot of stuff online. Uh, and I'm usually the one running the game rather than playing the game. And sometimes that can be just as fun. Um, and you will see games of Gunfighter's Ball. Uh, we are going to play them live on this channel. So there might be some up already. <laughs> if you're watching this video later, uh, there, there will be some if, the, if there isn't soon. So look forward to that. So uh, then you got your gear. So for each character, you're given a pile of nine poker chips. Now these nine poker chips, there's uh, six white and three red. And what the uh, the uh, three uh, six white represent is your life. Every time you take a damage, you take away a poker chip. When you get down to the red, you're obviously in danger of dying quicker, and your life is about to end. <laughs> so basically, you have nine lives. Get it? Uh, in in the game for each one of your characters, and it represents your health. Of course, you need a character card to keep track of your ammunition. Which there are some free downloads of some generic setups for cards to keep track of your uh, uh, ammunition and action cards, which is an ordinary deck of playing cards, which uh, the judge deals to draw a deck. Uh, and it's called an action deck. And the better your fighter, the more cards you are given, of course. So um, basically your characters can be uh, action points one to three. And based on, you know, what they, you know, how many actions they are, they're either better or, or, or worse. Now, when you're taking your turn, the judge will draw a card. So you'll draw the top card from the action deck and there will be a card on each character. Okay. So if you have the 10 of, if you have a 10, you know, uh, and you have two action points, you'll have two tens in the action deck and you'll have one right next to you, that, that character. So when a, a, a 10 is drawn, that actor, that character will take some, take their actions and, uh, they can form perform two actions and two different ones or two of the same ones twice. Now here's something interesting. So when you take a move action, it's not, oh, move five inches, uh, you know, and you stop right there. Movement in this game is a D10 sided or D10 or 10 sided die. And, and the more your character, it says to move, you roll a D10 and move your character that many inches. You don't even have to use your whole roll. So if you roll an eight, you can move five if you want, you can move three if you want, but you can, you can move a full eight. So it's total random movement, and this is a D10 system. I don't know if I said that or not or, or already, but it's a D10 uh, miniature, you know, miniatures game, which is what I normally use, uh, or my, not normally use, but my favorite kind of uh, miniatures war game is uh, uses a D10. The D10 system is my absolute favorite, uh, and then it gets into shooting. So. It's, it's also different. So you'll need a couple D10s. And the reason for this is, is it's a percentile game. So uh, ro rolling percentages. So for shooting, to shoot, you roll percentage dice, you roll two D10s, uh, uh, one is a different color than the other, which one is the 10 place, and the other one's the ones place. And if you roll equal to or less to the to hit number, which is listed on like the fire chart that they have in the game, which we'll see later, uh, you hit the target. So, uh, it, it, you'll have a, a to hit, um, you'll have a to hit number, which will be in a percentage, like a 40% chance to hit 50% chance to hit. And as long as you roll equal to that or higher, you, uh, do, you, you hit them. And then another unique thing, uh, which has these, these, the, uh, a, a chart is the damage. So if your shot hits the target, roll another percentile dice again to see where you hit. And sometimes you'll need a weird die called a D3, <laughs> which he says in here. And you can, you can make a fake one from a D6. Of course, you know, you just do a roll a D6, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and you know, one, two, three. So, um, and to find out how much damage you do. So damage is, uh, damage is kept track of with the nine poker chips called the wound chips. So, uh, when you cash in all your chips, your character is dead. So another unique thing about this game, okay, is quick draws. So if somebody tries to shoot at you and they're within nine inches, you can give up your next card to attempt a quick draw. So giving up your next card is when your card comes up on the action deck, you draw it out of the action deck, you'll give up that next action to do a quick draw on somebody that's within nine inches right? So it's to interrupt their shot. So each player gets one shot and the winner of the modified D6 roll, it's a D6 roll going first, uh, uh, 
with the winner of the modified d6 roll going first. So it's to see who goes first, I'm sorry. But each player will get a shot. So it's quick draws are kind of like an interrupt and you gotta be careful when you do them because you're giving up your next action to do so. So, and of course you have brawling. So to fight in hand to hand, each you rolls a d10, the high roll is the winner and the greater the difference in rolls, the greater the damage is done. So it's pretty simple pretty straightforward. And of course, you have dynamite. So <laughs> you gotta guess your opponent's distance, then you roll two, 2d6. If you roll a seven to a seven, 11 or doubles, the explosion stays on the mark. But if you roll any other combination of numbers, you miss and the center of the explosion is moved from two to six inches. If you roll snake eyes, the dynamite blows up in your hand. So characters within three inches of the blast are wounded and players within an inch and a half are automatically killed. So it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, dynamite's not good. <laughs> I mean, it's great if you want to use it, but uh, it's pretty awesome in this game. It just adds more flavor. So, uh, and also you'll be required to do some skill tests. So sometimes the judge will ask you to make some tests that are uh, percentile dice in order to perform an action that's either difficult or not covered in the rules. So now you have some idea, you know, what you're in for basically, you know, skill tests are, or, or something like, uh, I want to pick that lock or something like that. And the judge or the game master, as this has a feel of, uh, can say, okay, you have a 50, 50% chance. So you got to roll a percentile dice at 50% and see what happens. And that would be considered a skill test. Now, obviously if you're not playing with the judge, which, you know, is fine, you know, make sure you have that percentage you know, worked out at the beginning of the game um, before you guys sit down and start playing. And now we get into the game setup and uh, in more detail of what you're going to need to play this game. Now, as we previously talked about uh, in the setup, you have uh, a character card, like this is Jesse James, and these are the cards they're talking about to keep track of ammo you know, uh, that, that the basic ammo that they have. And then you have your action cards. Now he's a number three, so he's a level three. So he's going to get three action cards. that are going to be put into the action deck and handed to the judge or into the action deck to pull to see who's going to go first. And when an ace comes up, he has the, he has the ace as right next to his character card. It stays there. And if an ace comes up, his character, this character, Jesse James, is going to get two actions. He also has his nine poker chips, which is uh, his life that he has left. And they have the Pistolier deck, a card from the Pistolier deck. These are kind of special abilities that you can give your characters. Um, and they can be drawn randomly, uh, or you can pick some stuff out of the back of the book. But of course, that is something that you can explore in the book a little bit later. Or if you decide, which I recommend getting the Pistolier deck or the Ability deck. Uh, but it talks about what you're going to need exactly. You know, it's played on a 36 by 36 playing area, which is uh, three foot by three foot. Um, you obviously, you need some uh, some tape measures to because uh, everything's done in inches. At least two 10 sided dice with different colors. You know, because you're rolling percentile dice. You need one three sided die, maybe some note cards for your character, or the knuckle duster pre printed cards, which are pretty nice. I'd really recommend checking those out too from Knuckle Duster. They're pretty awesome. Of course, the red, the white and red poker chips, which you can actually, if you really wanted to, use six of one color and three of another color just to no notate, you know, when you're getting down to low health, you have to have a different color on the uh, uh, life chips or whatever. And then just an ordinary deck of playing cards for your action decks, of course. So it talks about dice. There's D3s, D10s, and D6s, and that's all you're going to need. And then it tells you about the judge and what the judge is responsible for in the game if you cho choose to use a judge for the game itself. And here's just kind of a look at the character cards that are pre-printed, that come pre-printed that you can get from Knuckle Duster for the game itself. Gives a little bit of flavor. Um, it says here, California Kate is quick with a pistol. Uh, to defend, defend her friends. It's a little bit of flavor text there. Uh, and it shows a printed out of a small knife. She has a small knife, a derringer, and a pistol. And, a lot, and most of these, I believe, are dry erase, so you can mark off bullets as you use them. Or you can just make circles on a card like they did over here and fill in the circles as they get, as they, you know, as you take shots. So, um, <clears throat> 
That's kind of what a character card looks like. And every character card has an action number. So this one's a two. Uh, and the two means they get two action cards in the action deck. Uh, this, which is kind of like the normal character will have two, a two action cards to be put in the deck. They'll have their hold card, which sits next to their character card, which is right here. Their hold card, which they will stay next to their action deck. And then they will have all their action cards that they choose. It doesn't matter what number out of the deck that you choose. You just choose an action number. You will put this many cards in the judge's action deck which would be two for California Kate. She, if, she picks, if you pick tens for her, she'll have a 10 right next to her as her hold card, and then you'll put, give, give two tens for the action deck. So uh, it, it also will have your weapons, of course, to keep track of ammunition and things like that. And also your weapons, any, any kind of special rules or damage, or what kind of weapon that you shot with, you're gonna need to know what they shot with to see what kind of damage is done or how to, uh, your to hit number. So, and it gives you an example, of course, uh, of the action cards here. Now the special abilities and quirks. So veteran gunfighters and semi iconic characters, they often have one or two special abilities. So these are bonuses which help the character during the gameplay. Kind of like when we play other games, uh, they have special abilities that each character that's unique to them. And you know, it's, it's a list of special abilities that is, is definitely endless. So a character known for marksmanship may have a reduced penalty when making a called shot. So if you're making a called shot, you know, or a trick, trick rider may be able to mount or dismount a horse without using an action, things along that line. Um, that would be considered in the special abilities. Now there's quirks. So you reveal an odd trait about the character. So these are like specific quirks that about the character that no one else has, you know, but unlike the special abilities, they may not always be helpful. <laughs> so, um, in the example that they give here, it includes being left-handed. So not being able to swim or having a bullet still lodged in their body near a nerve so that you fall prone every time you're, you know, every time you roll a one for movement. So if you create your own characters, the judge will have to decide uh, whether to use special abilities and quirks. Um, there's, a, there's, there's a list in the appendix of this book of special abilities and quirks, or you can use the Pistolier deck, which I believe that's what, yeah, that's what it is. And it's deadly skills learned on the Missouri-Kansas border during the Civil War. So your penalty for shooting from horseback is minus 10 instead of 20, because normally it'd be minus 10. Uh, and then these little horseshoes, uh, wrestles horse to the ground to use as cover. That's something he can do. And horses don't, uh, horse does not spook around gunfire. So obviously guerrilla horsemen would be an ability on a, for a gunfighter who has a mounted figure as well, whether he's mounted or dismounted, this would be really good for him. So, but, uh, and then it goes to talk about, you know, wound chips. So they represent the health points of the character and they're called wound chips. So if you do not have the wound chips, you know, the gunfighter specific balls, just, just use a poker chip to simply write nine circles on the character card if you want. Um, but make sure you mark the last three in some sort of special way, like we do for white and red chips. So rules of play. So this is kind of, <laughs> this runs through the order of play, uh, how to create your action deck, uh, alternative rule order for playing two to three characters. So when you're playing with only a few characters, getting more than one turn in a row can like be very unbalancing. So therefore it would suggest when your game starts with two or three total characters. So if you have one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two, -two, um, if the players would rather not shuffle a pair of cards, they may roll a D6 each time. So it, it leaves that option. I mean, it, honestly, it's your game. You play it the way you want. Uh, but the sequence of play is this one cycle of the action deck is a round. One card in the action deck made up of two actions is a turn. And an action is one specific deed or maneuver. And this starts talking about the actions that you can perform with your character. And obviously there's the normal ones like movement, shooting, brawling, which is, you know, hand-to-hand -hand fighting or any other actions like first aid or handing somebody an item or searching a building or something like that. But they, 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 this chart, this action chart is uh, in the quick reference. Uh, there's a quick reference chart in the back here that shows you the action chart of the actions that you can do. You can choose any two, any two you want. You can do them once, twice, what have you. 
Uh, now here you can crawl a 1D3, so you'll be able to crawl if you're prone. You can get up from prone. You can mount. Uh, mounted movement is 2D10, random movement. If you're on a wagon or, or a stagecoach or anything like that, it's 2D6 movement. You can mount or dismount a vehicle or horse. You can aim, so the effect does not carry over between turns, obviously. Uh, but you can fire up the three shots or one called shot. So that's a that's a big thing. So you can fire up to three shots from your gun, but you can do one called shot. So you're declaring a called shot. It's more specific and more deadly. Uh, you can declare bushwhack. So mo must sac sacrifice future turns to maintain the bushwhack, which I think that's kind of like Overwatch. You can load three bullets or shells. You can draw a weapon. You can place a weapon in your other hand. You can brawl. You can charge. You can do first aid. You can pick up or put away an item. You can use an item or search. And your only free actions you have on this chart are dropping items or talking to someone. So if you're talking to someone, that's free. You can actually talk one character to another. So then it gets into movement. More movement modifiers. Talks about bad terrain. How obstacles work. You know, so if there's a closed door, it's a minus one inch. <laughs> That's easy. Hard would be such as a window or a low fence. If you want to move through a window or a low fence, that's minus two inches. Extreme would be such like a high fence or climbing a roof, things like that. Um, trampling and other tricks. So during your movement, a horse or wagon stagecoach, you may decide to run over an opponent. Uh, there's rules for that. <laughs> and then uh, it's a very small section. If you look at this, it's, it's really not a lot uh, to learn. Um, it's all about playing and getting your reps in with the game uh, to learn this kind of stuff. Um, you know, with movement, it, it tells you the various random movements for a dog, a cat or cattle. I mean, uh, a horse, uh, you know, crawling on foot. It gives you the modifiers. So it's really easy, really easy to pick up. It's two pages for movement. Then you get into shooting. Okay. Shooting is pretty easy. So when you are drawing a card, uh, you get two actions. You decide, oh, I'm going to shoot. Okay. This is honestly the meat and potatoes of the game. Um, shooting is what happens a lot in the game is, it itself. Uh, but first you have to check if you can take an action to shoot. Uh, if you can see the target, if the target is in range of the weapon that you're using, and if you have any other action remaining on the action, uh, if you, if you have another action remaining on your action card, you don't intend to move you can move before shooting. So, um, that's how, I mean, that's your eligibility. So <clears throat> their line of sight or their sight lines, 180 degrees in the front arc. Uh, it's marked by imaginary lines, obviously. Uh, a move action can be used to change the direction you are facing before the shot is taken. So you can turn and fire, but if doing so results in a standard modifier for moving, before firing. So if you fire at two targets who are already within your 180 degree arc, either the two separate actions or through fanning, there is no firing modifier for movement. So you can do the whole fanning thing, you know, where they fan the trigger. That's another action that you can do when you're shooting. So it's pretty easy. Um, the firing procedures, you declare your target, you find the eligibility, you declare your target, you announce the number of shots you're going to take, three or one, or if you're going to be fanning, uh, and you can determine the range of the, you determine the range of the target. You determine the chance to hit and apply your modifiers. Then you roll to hit. Then you roll the wound. Uh, roll on the wound chart for each success, or you can get the uh, the death deck, which you just draw a card <laughs> when you damage somebody, and it tells you what you need to do. And then it goes through uh, the procedure for quick drawing, which is pretty neat. Uh, that's the, the quick draw is when you decide to forfeit your action to fire somebody at real, real quickly. And that's where you're going to need your D sixes. Uh, and then it's number. No, so normal rate of fire. You can engage multiple targets per action using fanning. So if you do the fanning thing, uh, and also you have rules for multiple weapons. So if you have more than one weapon, you got to choose one you're firing with, and then you have your fire chart. So you have pistol, derringer, rifle, hunting, Rifle, repeating rifle, shotgun, scatter gun, knife thrown, bow and arrow, and so on. So what they tell you is their ranges, their rate of fire, which means how many shot you can, shots you can shoot, and how much ammo they have, um, and number of hands you need to use that that weapon. Uh, 
And it should give you up close, short, medium, long, and extreme ranges that you can use and the percentage you need um, on, the die, on the die roll to roll in order to get a success um, or chance to hit. So um, now you can do bushwhacking. It has rules for bushwhacking, you know, kind of like uh, Overwatch. So determine the range, find the ba base to chance to hit. And really cool, they have the basic weapons. They show you guys here what they are, what they look like. And then uh, there's fire modifiers, all that you're modifying to firing. It's like blind shot through cover, shooting on horseback, things of that nature, primary and secondary modifiers. And these are just really short sections and it talks about cover, uh, blind shot through cover, uh, firing left-handed, uh, shooter is mounted, there's a minus 20%, uh, and the aim shot is plus 10%, so you get a bonus when you must spend your first action of your turn aiming and declared target and nothing else. So the aiming bonus only counts towards shots taken on the second action of the turn. Uh, fanning is minus 20%, so you're switching targets in such a short amount of time greatly affects your accuracy of the pistol fire. So you can fan your weapon, it's a minus 20%. So you roll the hit, at this point you roll the hit. It seems like a lot, but really honestly, it's just going through the, the kit and caboodle of what you need to do to shoot. And once you do this three or four times, you just automatically just look at the chart. Oh, yep, I'm good on that. So uh, tar targets on horses and vehicles chart. So if they're, if they're targets on uh, horses and vehicles, it gives you modifiers to that. And then you have your wound chart. Okay, so this wound chart right here, uh, there's one in the uh, wound chart right here, tells you where to hit it, or you have the deck of death. And the deck of death is, these are, you know, a percentage roll that you got to roll and this is what happens. You can just draw a card simply and say that's what happens uh, after you've hit. And then, of course, if you take some damage, damage you can, uh, you take away the damage from this chart here. Uh, and then it has some rules on, you know, what happens to you. Uh, where you get hit and how you take away wound chips. Uh, there's also an am animal wound chart <laughs> and if the animals take wounds. And other gunplay considerations, so reloading, caught in the crossfire, somebody's caught in the crossfire, hitting bystanders possibly. Talks about the shotgun, the scatter gun. Goes in a little bit more depth about dynamite. Dynamite was pretty awesome. We told you about that. Um, and brawling. So it talks about your close combat. Charging, uh, you can make a charge, but you must be able to see the opponent at the beginning of your action in order to charge them. Uh, it has how to brawl. It teaches you how to brawl here. Um, and obviously, and there's some modifiers for that. It's basically a roll off against each other. And you have some other actions you can perform, uh, like first aid, using an item, searching for stuff, free actions and miscellaneous actions that aren't really uh, discussed. Um, real easy, you know, uh, things that aren't, are unusual that you have to do for a scenario as well. Then you have skill tests and there's an easy test. There's a 75% chance of success. An average test is 50, 50, a hard test would be 25% of the success. And these are skill tests, you know, difficult tasks that your, your Western fighter would possibly have to, you know, do during a game. Um, and then you have environmental damages. Da I'm sorry, dangers. It's like fire, darkness, drowning, and falling. There's all rules for that and for brawling against animals. So when animals possibly attack, there are rules for that. And that, may that would make for a really awesome scenario. <laughs> so there's an optional rule for spooked environment, a cattle stampedes, and things like that. And they give you some tips for judges um, on how to do things in the game. Uh, they also have bystanders, uh, reactive bystanders, wild card bystanders you can have, uh, on the spot rulings. So any on the spot ruling. So like at some point a situation will come up that's not covered in the rules. This is when you would do a skill test or a temporary rule to solve that problem. Then it has its own section, which is wonderful. I love this about this book. This is one thing that uh, I'm really glad that's included into this. And it's actually de designing scenarios. It gives you a step-by-step -step process on how to design your scenarios for Wild West and how to make your do your research, how to do victory points and things like that. Um, 
but it really, really goes into depth on how exactly you want your scenarios to be run and what can kind of balance them out and stuff like that. And I love how a book includes that, you know, is here's a step-by-step -step process. If you're not good at scenarios or if you just want to make one up yourself, here's a set of, you know, very flexible rules that you can use to design them. Then they have the ready-made scenarios. So there's uh, quite a few of these. Uh, there's one that uses these dirty tricks cards that you can print out. Um, and this here is uh, uh, like a three level scenario uh, situation that you can go level one, level two, and level three in, um, which I have played these. They're a blast. They're a lot of fun. Uh, a great ball of fire is a scenario, a big scenario that's set up. It tells you who you need to use and what cards you need to use. Uh, and you can actually make the cards yourself. And then there's the gunfight at the OK, OK Corral Redux. <laughs> uh, there's uh, version one of just take old, take just like old times. So there's four different ways to play the gunfight at OK Corral with Doc Holliday, Billy Clanton, Ike Clanton, uh, and playing for blood. There's four different kinds. Uh, there's Rustler's Rhapsody, Grand Balls, uh, uh, Two Can Carry, Three Way, and of course. That's it, that's all, that's the scenarios. And you have a way to design your own. And then we get into the appendix. And the appendix shows you different ways to play, uh, like the pistol or your deck. The three card variation. How to do faction design and faction creation. It breaks down the numbers for you so you can, you know, uh, come up with this stuff on your own. Also, our characters on your own, but it also, if you go online uh, to Knuckle Duster Miniatures and go to downloads, there's a free download of the generic, you know, weapons uh, cards that you can print out yourself and um, uh, uh, use for their weapons themselves. So they're generic ones that switch around the weapons and you can just use those for your characters. So then they had to talk about campaign characters. Special abilities and quirks are obviously in the back here that you can add to your characters. You can obviously do this as a random roll, uh, or you can just hunt and peck and pick your own. Uh, and then it goes into advanced weapon rules like cap and ball, small caliber weapons, small capacity pistols, cumbersome weapons, double action weapons, rare weapons that gamers love like the Lamont Ra a rival, a revolver, sorry, rifled muskets, bayonet pistol, <laughs> Winchester 1892 with a set screw, uh, the Mars leg, Mare's leg, sorry. So these are specialty weapons that you can use. And of course the Gatling gun. If you play Western games and you don't have a Gatling gun, you need to get one just for fun. And then it gives you suggestions on how to paint the figures. And I love that. A lot of rule books don't include that sort of thing anymore. And I think that's really neat that they do that because a lot of people, you know, have trouble saying, oh, well, what should I paint this guy? What should I paint this guy? You know, pick the colors because there's earth tones, but the Wild West was so colorful. And here is an insanely helpful guide uh, in the back. It's on page 89 of Gunfighter's Ball. Choosing colors. So if you're choosing black, the black color black for boots, hats, trousers, suits, and some leather work. White for hats, shirts, and other details. Dark gray, very common cl clothing color was dark gray. Uh, light gray, sometimes preferable to white for shirts and eyeballs. Uh, drab gray, Dark gray with a slight greenish tone is a non-distinct color to use for wool and satin backs and some vests. But that's just some suggestions, and they tell you what they're used for. Uh, and then, of course, uh, <laughs> artist profile is James Wapple. Uh, Mr. Wapple, he's part of our show. He's really awesome. He does a fantastic job of painting miniatures. Uh, and then it tells you about setting the ter uh, terrain in Gunfighter's Ball. And of course, the thank you to all his backers. And in the very back of the book, you've got your index so you can find things really quick. And I'm going to tell you something, this index is a hard thing to do for a rule book. So the fact that it's included is wonderful. And you can say, oh, okay, trampling, I can go to page 17. Oh, weapons, okay, 22 to 23. It's beautiful. And of course, the player's cheat sheet is the last thing in the book, which is everything you need to play the game, all the charts and stuff like that. But you won't necessarily need all of them, like the wound chart, you can just use the deck, the black deck of death. Um, 
of course in that and it's just it's just absolutely amazing the book is great you learned literally you you could play right now just after watching this video uh so you got the gist of it it's it's real simple it's gunfighting in the old west uh and you can literally do it gives you everything you need in this book so i'm very impressed with gunfighters ball it's definitely uh, a convention game that uh, I would like to use uh, for sure and some fun games to play with my friends online. You will be seeing this rule book played online uh, here in, on the channel. Uh, that's all I got for you guys. That was Gunfighters Ball. Thanks for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Please tell a friend. And last but not least, from me to you, ta-ta, and I will catch you in my next rule book review.